on this live show from Rimmons Perspectives 2019 event right here in Washington, D.C. We're talking network migration. It's more than just IP. It's elevating the customer experience. We're here with Chris Dupuy. He's technology analyst and founder of the 650 Group. Next to him is Greg Collins. He's principal analyst and founder, Exact Ventures. And on the end is the one and only Sanjay Bhatia. He's vice president of solutions marketing and strategy that at Ribbon. And gentlemen, welcome. Thank you. I had to throw that Thank part you. in there. The one and only. <laughs> you know, so since we have you on uh, on this panel, before we actually get into the content, I want to ask you, uh, over the last day and a half, so what's your feedback, what's your takeaway? No, it's been amazing, uh, you know, this Perspectives 19 show uh, that Ribbon Hole has held, it, it's been amazing. We're getting some excellent feedback from our partners and customers alike, uh, and uh, they just uh, love it. Uh, any feedback from you guys as well? Um, yeah, for me, so I've been to a few of these, and this is really the first time where, you know, Ribbon is, is, a, is a whole entity. So we're really starting to see the, uh, the fruits of the labor in integrating Sonish and GenBand and what the, uh, the path forward really looks like, as well as new investments in analytics and the, the Candy, the CPaaS, and the UCAS stuff. So it's exciting, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing, uh, seeing the growth coming, I think. Yeah, well, Ribbon's made itself a new company. It was uh, used to be a voice company, now it's yeah. data, analytics, and voice, and it, the message is very, very clear at the show. I wanted to get all three of you uh, answering or sort of get your sentiments on this. Tell me about, and Sanjay, I'll start with you if you don't mind. Yeah. Tell me about the SIP trunking market and yeah. sort of the climate where we, the climate that we're in right now. Yeah, I mean, you know, the SIP trunk market uh, continues to grow. Uh, you know, as a lot of enterprises adapt uh, unified communications, uh, unified communications as a service, moving to the cloud, it just increases the need for SIP trunking because all of that is pure IP based. Uh, and once they move their communications environments to SIP and IP and to the cloud, uh, they need more and more SIP trunking. So clearly, you know, uh, globally and uh, as a market, uh, SIP trunking continues to grow. Yeah, SIP trunking is a, is a good market, a really good market for uh, session border controllers, one of the areas I cover. And uh, so we've seen a lot of uh, good growth on premises-based session border controllers that handle SIP trunking. And uh, we're starting to see more SIP trunking as a service. Uh, and I think that's really expanded the market for SIP trunking in that um, the costs are a lot, uh, a lot cheaper. People can buy SIP trunks in, in greater fractions, so it's a lot more flexible than maybe older SIP trunking, and, and certainly more than PRI, which is the, the legacy TDM technology. So uh, like Sanjay said, there's, there's a lot of good growth. It's coming from a bunch of different segments, from you know, CPaaS and, uh, and UCAS, as well as uh, Microsoft Teams. Well, it's SIP's the new technology that's replacing the old technology, and, and companies, uh, companies like Ribbon are, you know, at the forefront of this, and it's, uh, you know, it's being received well. Uh, Sanjay, I want to start with you again. Uh, yeah. Give us a little bit more, so maybe uh, go a little granular, more granular on the impact on the carrier space as far as SIP trunking goes. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's getting very interesting out in the market, right? The carriers are still uh, quite dominant in, in providing SIP trunk services, but there's, you know, the cloud players are in, in the same game. Uh, there's over-the-top uh, players that are also involved in providing SIP trunking. So it's getting to be uh, a little bit of fragmentation going on in the market, but certainly uh, from a ribbon perspective, you know, clearly we are the market leader in enterprise session border controllers and we uh, operate our premise-based or software-based uh, solutions in all those environments, right? So uh, we are really here to address the needs of the market. Greg, can you tell our audience who are maybe not as astute as you in this, in this area, the relationship between um, carriers and over-the-top players as far as SIMP trunking goes? Um, well, over-the-top players don't have kind of a, a direct pipe into an enterprise. So it would be like uh, a Twilio, for example, is an over-the-top provider. A Google would be an over-the-top provider, whereas um, a more traditional provider would have a direct, you know, sort of physical connection into an enterprise. So um, SIP trunking then, you know, started out where you would have um, one of the traditional operators that had access to that physical pipe would be able to offer a SIP trunk, whereas you know, in more recent times, the over-the-tops have, have been able to sort of expand their CPaaS business 
to begin to offer offer SIP trunks. Yeah, okay, so SIP trunking as a service is uh, being brought to market by, by many uh, different operators, both like as Greg was saying, the over-the-top companies as well as um, uh, as well as traditional operators. And what, what's happening is the OTT guys are putting pressure on the traditional telecom operators and it's sort of forcing them to, you know, uh, pr provide uh, STAAS is I think what we're talking about, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, what's happening is there, these operators are getting pressure to, to perform here and they're looking for technology providers that are gonna allow them to do that and it turns out at the show we're learning a lot about the candy offerings that are helping the operators pursue this, uh, this one upsmanship. Sanjay, yes. as far as candy goes, again, um, sort of debrief us on uh, for, the, for the audience that's not, not as astute on that as, as we are. Yeah, yeah, so what it is is basically uh, anytime there's a cloud UC or cloud PBX type of a service, uh, you need SIP trunks going from that service into the enterprise. And you need session border controllers on both ends to be able to secure that communications. Uh, and so that's what uh, SIP trunking is all about. And so when you talk about SIP trunking as a service, it's basically providing the capabilities for the enterprises to be able to connect back into the PSTN, so to speak, uh, to be able to talk to other people around the world, right? Uh, and so that's what SIP trunks really are. And, and SIP trunking as a service is an offering for that. Sanjay, I want to uh, transition quickly over to 5G. Um, aside from speed itself, uh, what are sort of the, the drivers for 5G and, what, and why the migration towards 5G? Again, give us a broad brush. Yeah, yeah, no, certainly 5G also is all about uh, providing low latency and providing edge computing and providing uh, the Internet of Things. Uh, so allowing and enabling the mobile service providers to be able to address those growing markets for, for Internet of Things and uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, driverless cars, autonomous vehicles, and, and, and those kind of things, and, and, you know, industrial internet of things. Uh, so those are some of the capabilities that 5G enables for the mobile service providers. Greg, as far as 5G goes, and again, aside from speed, or you can throw speed in there too, how does that fit into sort of the environment that we're in right now? Um, so I, I guess I have a little bit more of a, a cynical or pragmatic view of the short term uh, motivation behind 5G. So there's the marketing use case. So every carrier wants to be able to go and sell the latest and greatest service. So there's sort of a marketing urgency behind 5G. In fact, one carrier, AT&T, markets their services 5G, but it's really 4G. So again, there's a lot of marketing urgency behind that. And there's geopolitical urgency behind 5G and making sure that uh, every country's carriers are uh, deploying the latest and greatest. And um, there's a question about whether a country can maintain their competitiveness over the long period of time without being a leader in this. So there's a, a lot of urgency on that level. And I think that's really what's driving things in the near term. But like Sanjay said, you have like the three classic use cases for 5G, mm -hmm. the enhanced mobile broadband. And I think that's important because carriers, especially in North America, are running out of spectrum to accommodate their growth. So having that spectrum from 5G is really important. And then the massive IoT, yes, yes. And, that, and that's a big one. And then last one is the ultra low latency, so driverless cars. So those are the three classic things. I think the massive IoT and the driverless cars, so to speak, are, are more longer term because you really need a lot of you know, really solid 5G coverage for that. Um, so, you know, as we smartphones come out that are 5G capable, you'll you'll have that mobile broadband aspect and that use case uh, really take the lead, and those other ones will be down the road. Uh, Chris, uh, 5G again in the environment that we're in right now. Can you tie, how do you tie 5G back to what we're seeing here today? Okay, so what's happening with 5G is there's an incredible marketing machine behind the idea of 5G. It's, it's actually really uh, tremendous. We started earlier this year when we were at the Mobile World Congress trade show, we were all at the show. And uh, it's actually gotten enterprises and consumers, uh, vendors uh, in, the, in the telecom equipment industry and operators very excited. So I think it's a great idea to tap into this, this marketing hype. But the thing is that um, much of the expected growth 
is actually an enterprise. And it turns out that enterprises already have wireless in their networks. It's kind of ironic. So uh, what there is a lack of is services to run over this unlicensed spectrum in the enterprise. And it, it, what's, what's very interesting about that is where, where Ribbon stands. It actually is an enabler of the services to enterprises. It's a nice, nice tie-in together for, for how 5G hype leads to you know, ongoing opportunities for, for companies like Ribbon. Yeah, yeah. Sanjay, uh, for carriers specifically 5G, is it more about new revenue streams or more about retention or both? No, it's it's about both for sure. Uh, uh, probably more, a little bit more on the creating new revenue streams side, uh, but uh, certainly you know retention is also very important given the subscriber churn that is going on. Uh, but yeah, you know, in terms of ribbon and where you know where we play, it's all also about uh, you know uh, analytics, uh, providing the analytics to be able to take actionable, uh, uh, you know, provide actionable uh, applications for for the analytics that comes in from all these edge devices. Greg? Um, I, I think a lot of it is uh, a new revenue opportunity down the road as well as, as marketing today. I mean, you want to have 5G so someone you know, goes into your store knowing that they can get the latest and greatest if they want. So it's, it's important today from a marketing perspective. But longer term, the, the revenue uh, opportunity I think is really important for carriers. And what often goes unlooked with 5G is is the core network and the revision that carriers will have to do to their core network to provide things like um, network slicing, for example, or the scale needed to provide massive IoT uh, and the latency needed to provide the uh, autonomous cars. So that means the core network has to be essentially uh, mm -hmm. not revive, well you need to have a co new core network, so to speak. Yeah. And that new core network will be you know, cloud-based, and um, so you'll have core networks that look more like you know, a Google or Amazon data center than central offices today. So, so that's a big, big change that's going to go on. And that will help enable service providers to provide these applications and opening up their networks, uh, exposing APIs. And, and that's another aspect where Ribbon's playing in is opening up, you know, is providing API services to these service providers so they can open up all the great resources that they have in their network to, um, to partners, to enterprises, and to people that can leverage that. Chris, uh, 5G's impact on the carrier space, again, in uh, the context of the climate that we're in right now, in, in, under this roof here today. Okay, so uh, you guys have both uh, covered a lot of ground here. Um, one, a couple things that, uh, that haven't been discussed in this part of, the, part of our talk, let's, let's say, is one of the things I'm seeing is uh, like when companies are deploying SD-WAN, you know, connecting their enterprise locations to other enterprise locations and to co-location facilities is there's uh, a growing demand for having like cellular yeah. be the second connection on an SD-WAN. And, and it's, it's actually been surprising uh, how many inquiries I've gotten in, in my line of work as, you know, research and things. Anyway, so I think there's a need for LTE and 5G on these SD-WAN links. So there, it's kind of a tie between 5G and you know, connecting buildings and so on. It's uh, something you guys didn't mention. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, that's the main thing that comes to mind at this point on 5G that has been discussed. Sanjay, this time next year, I always ask you this question, SIP trunking and any area actually that you want to mention, uh, what do you think the conversation will be? Yeah, I mean, it's going to keep on growing towards you know, analytics, machine learning, AI, uh, 5G, IoT. I mean, uh, those are here to stay uh, for a while. And so you're just going to keep on hearing a little bit more about that uh, here next year. By the way, so uh, just from a very, uh, uh, and I truly mean objective point of view here, what do you attribute the um, steep growth of Ribbon right now? I mean, it's clear that uh, you're making a mark on the industry. And again, from a very objective uh, comment there, what do you attribute that to? Well, I mean, you know, we're very, very focused in uh, helping our customers uh, meet their needs as well as uh, their customers' needs, right? So really, when you focus on certain areas uh, uh, and make your customers happy, right? I mean, that's really where we are laser focused in providing our solutions for. Greg, again, uh, any uh, futurist uh, sentiment about uh, sort of Ribbon's uh, core competencies and where you think the conversation will be a year from now? Uh, I think it'll be a lot more on the, uh, the hosted solutions, CPaaS and, and, and UCAS. I think those are, are big growth areas for, for everyone. And you know, Ribbon has a lot of legacy experience in 
in voice and, and helping uh, operators um, sort of leverage the, the legacy systems that they have with, with the newer revenue opportunities. And then, like Sanjay mentioned, they, they made a big push into, into analytics, which opens up a, a big new area for them. So I'm excited to see what comes of that. Chris? Okay, so uh, in terms of growth opportunities here, first of all, uh, since we're here at this conference, what I've noticed is that Ribbon's got many, many very loyal customers. In fact, one of, the, one of the customers yesterday went through a plan where they said they won't remove the last piece of legacy equipment until I calculated the year 2083. Okay, so they've got some very loyal, loyal customers here that have, have got uh, a good working relationship with them. And another one I just talked to is doing a similar time scale. Very loyal customers that are looking to Ribbon for solutions. And Ribbon, what they're doing is you know, coming out with new uh, technologies, not just in their traditional area of voice, but also in, in data and analytics. And these are, generally speaking, growth areas that, that the company can penetrate. Well, it's always good to have all three of you on the panel. In fact, uh, this is our first time for you and I, Chris, yeah. but Thank Greg, you. we've done this before, yeah. and Sanjay, of course, we've done this uh, several times. Yeah. Uh, a great event, by the way. Um, Thank you. I haven't had a chance to poke my head Thank into you. too many places, but I hear all the kind of the buzz. So. Uh, it's always good to come in a, to an event like this. And by the way, it's good to come to an event that actually conducts business, and it's not just like walking an expo <laughs> floor like it was like five, ten years ago. <laughs> so that's always fun. Uh, again, thanks for your time. Thank you. Great, thanks. And to all of our viewers out there watching this live stream, if you want the on-demand content, it's just right below this live stream. It's going to be from 12 to 5 p.m. today. So long.